Amen. Okay. Hello, everyone. Happy Sabbath. Um, let me try to adjust this a bit. So, um, today I would little bit. I would like to a little bit continue of what we have done at prayer meeting um, last time. And we were talking there about the structure. So this will be interactive. So please um, participate if you can. Um, that will be very appreciated. Um, so um, last time we have started the prayer meeting with, because in Germany, um, in January this year, there has been done presenta presentation about structure. And um, at the end of the presentation, there was asked question if we need to, that we need to think if we have done something wrong, creating that structure, hierarchy, um, or if it's a natural healthy uh, development, um, top to bottom structure. And um, we did go into some examples and basically almost everywhere we see hierarchy. Uh, through the histories. Uh, we see it in heaven as well. Um, then we talked a bit about um, how um, good people ask for king, um, Abraham. And yeah, so, so yeah, so, and we had mentioned that it has started already in heaven. So now there has been some presentations regarding organization lately. Um, does someone have some ideas what presentations um, were there regarding to organization, leadership, um, anything regarding to organization? If you can um, give me some names of it, please. What presentations has been done regarding to organization or re re leadership structure or anything like this? So structure is one of it. So can I ask Emma if she knows some? You mean the content of the presentation? So we talked about the structure of the continental leaders and the ministries under that and there was it's just about how to choose leaders and how we've chosen leaders in this movement and how mm -hmm. we operate whether it's by people's qualities or I suppose you might say gifts and talents can't remember that's not the word we used um or whether it's by the holy spirit or god choosing god led you know we have that kind of contrast between god leading and kind of their personal testimony over qualifications or fitness mm -hmm. for the job and how do we move forward if we pe people are put in jobs that are not qualified or not fit uh, those kind of questions were raised mm -hmm. thank you emma yeah so so yeah so we have mentioned the structure the way it is organized and the way people are chosen on qualities um opposed to not on the um Godlet, um, the testimonies. I know Curtis had a hand up, but um, Emma probably said some of the things you wanted to say, I guess. Yeah, that's correct. Um, mm -hmm. I think another one um, is, well, at least looking at the political uh, scenery and we, in past presentations, compared and contrasted communism and capitalism and understanding that in politics, we could infer insights onto what our organization should look like. Thank you, Curtis. Yes. Um, yeah, so there has been quite a few discussions. There has been discussion regarding to voting, if it should look like a democratic model and that stuff. So, and because the things, um, some of the things can cause kind of like shakings and that stuff. So 
um, we can see kind of like this, this issue through the histories, uh, through different history stories, dispensations. And um, so I think I would like um, us to look at heaven, then where it all started. Um, and we will be reading quotes. I will read quotes at the mo like just now, which says, it's from Patriarch and Prophets. It says, Satan's rebellion was to be a lesson to the universe through all coming ages. Well, I will post it as well so you can read along. Through all coming ages, a perpetual testimony to the nature of sin and its terrible results. And there is one more, um, which is saying something similar. Um, someone can read it, please. The second one. Thus, the history of this terrible experiment of rebellion was to be a perpetual safeguard to all holy beings, to prevent them from being deceived as to the nature of the transgression, to save them from committing sin and suffering its penalty. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Debbie. Um, so, yeah, so we see that uh, this rebellion, what has happened, um, uh, this lesson through the universe for all coming ages, so for everyone, um, and this type of things kind of like repeating. So we're going to go in there. And before we go there, also we know that there are two streams of information, which are what if we would do two streams of information? Um, I know there could be like more possible answers. <laughs> I'm looking too specific, specific but um, yeah, some ideas. What would we say, what are the two streams of information? In what context? Um, in our test, of our test. Are you talking about like CNC and then Fox or something like that, or no? That, that would be kind of like one of the thing and what they are about. Um, Natalie says true for prophet and false prophet. Um, I could I could put yeah. I will put truth. And error. Which coming with conspiracy theories. And I'm looking for one more. Um, and it's the two different types of government. So this was one of the answers I was kind of like looking for. And what two different governments do we have? You mean the parties, the parties, the two different parties? What oh. they are standing for, the ethos. Freedom. Freedom. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. And, and, the other one, and the other one, I can't remember. It's the other one now. <laughs> freedom and something. <laughs> so freedom is for this yeah, one. Right. Yeah. So, and this one? The yeah, equality. Equality, yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Now, um, it, like, it doesn't mean like, you know, God's kingdom is built also on freedom, but it's when the two collide, what do you choose? So this is kind of like, thank you. This is kind of like what I wanted to start with. So with these two different governments um, and um, okay. Now, what was the issue with Lucifer in heaven? What was the issue Sorry, with repeat that again, please? Uh huh. What was the issue with Lucifer in heaven? Um, I think about well, being, uh, being the same as God is. Uh huh. So God, wanting to be like him. Okay, so could we say that he wanted supermassive? Sorry, 
can't, I can't. Could we say that he wanted supermassive? Su super what? Sorry. Supremacy. Supremacy. Oh, supremacy. Um, yes. Okay. He was coming against the government of God. Uh huh. Was against. God's government. Mm hmm. Self exaltation. I don't know if that's the same as supremacy. Say again. Self exaltation. Mm -hmm. Self exaltation. Power. Power. Some other idea? Uh, yes, uh, Natalie, against leadership, uh, pride and jealousy. Pride and jealousy. Okay, thank you very much. That could be enough for now. So I want us to start first with spiritual gifts. The chapter is called The Fall of Satan. Uh, it's quite a short chapter, so we will be reading a few quotes from here. Um, sometimes even just parts of the quotes, or I will far paraphrase some. Um, and after, we will go to Patriarch and Prophet. So, I'm going to, if I'm going to read some longer man or something, I'm going to post it in the chat so we can read it along. So Satan and his affected mans who were striving to reform the government of God, which someone said here, wished to look into his unsearchable wisdom to ascertain his purpose in exalting Jesus and endowing him with such an unlimited power and command. So they have rebelled against the authority of the Son of God. Um... They did go against the government, um, Lucifer, and then the people who are uh, the angels who he deceived. Um, and then it was decided that Satan should be expelled from heaven and that the angels who joined with Satan in rebellion should be turned out with him. Um, so I'm going to do a line here. It's not a reform line, but we will be putting there. I want to put here now that he was, and we were kind of like adding things there, that he was expelled from heaven. Um. Uh, this cha this chapter doesn't go into much detail, so it does give us a little bit more details than what gives us Patriarch and Prophet, so it's a bit enlarged on it, but there's not many details in here. Um, and the good angels, the true angels, they stayed there, and Satan and his followers um, were driven from heaven. And now I'm going to post there another quote. If someone would like to read that, please. I will need a lot of leaders, uh, readers today. You want me to do it? Yes, please. Thank you. After Satan was shot out of heaven with those who fell with him, he realized that he had lost all the purity and glory of heaven forever. Then he repented and wished to be reinstated again in heaven. He was willing to take his proper place or any place that might be assigned to him. 
But no, heaven must not be placed in jeopardy. What does it say, Natalie? Uh, I have another look in a minute. I'm on my phone, so it's hard to go see you and go back and have a look at what uh -huh. I've just read. But I think it was kind of saying that, um, I'm not reading it because I can't see the quote, but it's kind of saying that uh, after Satan rebelled, he sort of regretted it, but it was too late. He wanted to come back in and just take any old place as long as he was sort of back in heaven. But it, it was too late, I think. Let me see the quote. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, so, so, yeah. Yeah, sorry, someone wanted to say something. Yeah, he repented and uh, and wished to be reinstated. Like I said, he'd want to take any place. Mm -hmm. but, it, but God mm -hmm. didn't want to cause any jeopardy in, in heaven, so it was a no-no. Mm -hmm. I think it's because it wasn't true repentance, so we couldn't allow him back in heaven. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, yeah, so... He kind of like realized everything. He repented and he wished to go back, but it was too late. So could we say that this was for him? I'm saying this is not like a reform line, but we could say that this was for him close of probation. Could we say that? Yes. Thank you. I'm going to write close of probation. We will read through another part, um, I think in Patriarch and Prophet that before the time, he did have a time to repent. Um, but this is point where he, um, but when it was too late already. Um, and I'm going to post another quote. It's a bit of enlargement of what we have read just now. So if someone could read it, please. I could have another leader, a reader. <laughs> Sorry, I'm so tired today. Okay, could I ask Richard, could you read that, please? I just posted it in the chat. Satan and its followers repented. He and his, okay, yeah, that's it, yeah. Mm-hmm wept and implored to be taken back into the favour of God. But no, their sin, their hate, their envy and jealousy have been so great that God could not blot it out. It must remain to receive its final punishment. When Satan became fully conscious that there was no possibility of its being brought again into favour with God, then Satan's malice, or Lucifer's malice and hatred began to be manifest. Mm -hmm. Satan consulted with its angels and a plan was laid to work, a plan was laid to still work against God's government. Thank you, yes. Yeah. So basically it does say that, uh, it does a bit enlarge and then when he realized that he can get back, um, so basically his hatred um, did get manifested. Um, okay, so I think this is just what I would like to get now from the um, spiritual gifts, uh, the chapter. Um, then it goes on to talking about Adam and Eve, which I probably will leave out for now. Um, but um, in past presentation with Elder Tess, we did go kind of like through Eden as well and how Adam and Eve um, sinned and that they were born of everything what has happened in heaven and of the consequences um, if they choose wrong stream. So that's just to uh, bring that um, in our mind. We maybe will speak about it next time a bit more. Um, okay, so... So in Patriarch and Prophets, it does speaks about that all beings were perfect. Lucifer was full of wisdom and perfect in beauty. Um, 
it says to was perfect entire ways from the day that to was created the iniquity was found in thee um so i'm going to write here that they were perfect And now we will add another quote and I will ask, can I ask Kasia or Hazel if could read this quote, please? Kasia or H Hazel? Could you read this quote or? Hello? Yes, Hello. I can hear you now. Hello. This is what came to indulge at the desire for self-exaltation. This scripture says, Thine heart was lifted up because of thy beauty. Thou hast corrupted thy wisdom by reason of thy brightness. Ezekiel 28, uh, 17. Thou hast said in thine heart, I'll exhaust, I'll, sorry, I'll exhaust, I'll exalt my throne above the skies of God. I'll be like the most high. But I'm talking Thank you. Uh, mm -hmm. 35.2, thank you very much. So it does say, so little by little, Lucifer came to indulge the desire for self-exaltation. So I want to write here little by little. So it's kind of like start small and it will be enlarging. Um, Hmm. Okay, maybe I'll read another quote. I'm sorry, it will be lots of reading. Um, so if I could have another leader, reader. <laughs> um, can I ask Simba to read, please? Or anyone? Okay, I'll read. Thank you, Ignatius. The Son of God presented before him the greatness, the goodness, and the justice of the Creator, and the sacred and changing nature of his law. God himself had established the order in heaven, and in departing from it, Lucifer would dishonor his maker and bring ruin upon himself. Mm -hmm. uh, what are you getting from this quote, please? Um, I, I think um, Christ is, is, uh, is, is um, trying to reach out, reach out to, to Lucifer, to explain the principles of heaven, the goodness and justice of, of God, and that God's law could not be changed, and that the order that was established in heaven could also um, not be changed, and that if Lucifer were to depart from the from God's law, the established order that is in heaven that would actually bring ruin upon himself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Thank you. Yeah, so so we can see that kind of like cause and effect um, if um, they depart from it. So um, it will cause the ruin upon themselves. Mm. And often to others as well. Um, Lucifer allowed his jealousy of Christ to prevail and become the more and became the more determined. 
So we see little by little. So Lucifer did allow the jealousy of Christ to prevail and has become more determined. So it does intensify. Um, so this is what I've just read. So line upon line, it has originated in heaven. And so now we have so many lines which pointing us to kind of like this issue, um, which is standing before us. Um, so... Um, To dispute the supremacy of the Son of God. So we see here kind of like it was about supremacy. Um, okay. Like the so, got his hand up. Sorry. Oh, sorry. I think I just. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, Brian. Sorry, I haven't seen your hand. Hi. Um, I don't want to distract from your actual lesson, but this keeps playing up in my mind since you introduced the subject that Lucifer and the angelic host that rebelled and sinned, their punishment, or if you want to call it punishment, was they were expelled from heaven. Mm -hmm. Adam, Adam and Eve also had the same thing, but it went further. They actually witnessed death. I'm like kind of perplexed as to how come Lucifer and his angels have never died. I don't know if anybody can shed light on that. Um... Well, Lucifer is the one who's deceiving. Um, one thing is um, that Adam and Eve, they were um, a kind of like drive away from Eden. Um, and they saw um, the, eff the effect of it, the cause and effect, um, which they were born about. Um, but you're saying that the angels and Lucifer never has died. But um, it has originated kind of like with them. So they are trying to kind of like get hold onto the like kind of like hold onto the world um, and driving it. Um, so I think it's maybe a bit different example because um, Because that's what has started in heaven. I don't know how to explain. That someone has some idea. I have an idea. Okay. Because they have eaten from the tree of life, which perpetuates eternal life. Because if you remember that quote where we wanted to take the city, celestial city, when it, the second resurrection, um, the battle of Gog and Magog, he wanted to take the city because the tree of life was in the city that perpetuates eternal life eternal life mm -hmm. so they have lost it so, so yeah. humans humans haven't well uh, uh, did humans actually eat from the tree of life yeah they must have eaten from it um but it, obviously they ate from it for far longer than what adam and eve did mm -hmm. i'm just not sure if that still answers um okay answer yeah that's just my fault thank you um thank you richard and good days. Um, what comes to mind is, if I can say, the different nature of their transgressions um, in terms of Adam and Eve um, do what they do on earth, and so they witness the results of their transgressions on earth um, with death and etc. in the in, and the immediacy of it, uh, whereas Satan transgresses at a political level in terms of sets the whole great controversy uh, story into motion and so Satan has to witness the effects of that transgression transgression and see it through in its entirety 
for setting off this chain of reactions. And so Lucifer, uh, Satan and their host remains alive to go through that whole process. And then finally they die, as we know from uh, Ellen White's writings in the Bible. Um, they die at the end. So it's not that one doesn't die and one does die. It's just what they then are put through in terms of to witness. Yeah, it's just time scales, but there is death for Satan and their host. Mm -hmm. So it's like the height, the consequences from the heights that they're fallen from. They have to see the consequences of it through millennia and millennia. Mm -hmm. Thank you. Um, I hope that has answered your question, Brian. Okay. Um, Obviously, it brings forth another question. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah, in that, look, fine. I accept what Curtis and uh, everybody else is saying. However, my other question, leading question, is that we now get involved in something that we shouldn't have been involved because Satan is a uh, Lucifer and his host are allowed to continue. You get what I'm saying? We are brought into a, a mess that we did not participate in and are dragged into sin, into the sin issue, the great controversy that we should not be involved in. Yeah. 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 Uh, hi, Michael. Sorry, I, I didn't raise my hand. Sorry. That's okay. Yeah. No, I just wanted to say, uh, I, I guess I understand where Brian is coming from, but I think uh, the other angels could probably say the same. That, you know, we were dragged into something we're not supposed to be in. Because I'm sure they didn't want to be in this mess as well. So it mm -hmm. seems like we're all we're all in a situation we don't want to be in, basically. Unfortunately. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, okay, so... Um... I think we will carry on. Um, so there is another quote, just short one, and that's the point when, um, where kind of like summoned um, before God, um, and that's where uh, God has set the true position of of Christ of Jesus. Um, so that was when it was kind of like shown. Um, so I'm going to probably do another way mark here. Um, and that's where it was pronounced that um, Jesus is equal to God. Um, okay. Um, Okay, so when this has happened, when that was announced, so um, the most exalted angels as ministers and subjects rejoicing in the light that fell upon them from the presence of the deity. So we see here again, kind of like hierarchy, the most exalted angels as ministers and subjects. Um, okay, now there will be a longer quote, so I will have to for sure separate it into two. Okay, so if anyone could read it, please. Um, it's quite a long one. Um, yeah. Um, the angels joyfully acknowledge the supremacy of Christ and prostrating themselves before him poured out their love and adoration, 
Lucifer bowed with them, but in his heart there was a strange, fierce conflict. Truth, justice and loyalty were struggling against envy and jealousy. The influence of the holy angels seemed for a time to carry him with them. As songs of praise ascended in melodious strains, swelled by thousands of glad voices, the spirit of evil seemed vanquished, unutterable. Love thrilled his entire being. His soul went out in harmony with the sinless worshippers, in love to God and the Son, but again he was filled with pride in his own glory. His desire for supremacy returned, and envy of Christ was once more, more indulged. Do you want somebody to read the next one? Or... Um... And just somebody else. Yeah, let's stop. No, no, you can carry on, actually, please. Yeah. The high honours conferred upon Lucifer were not appreciated at God's special gift and therefore called forth no gratitude to his creator. He gloried in his brightness and his exaltation and aspired to be equal with God. He, be he was beloved and reverenced by the holy, the heavenly host. Angels delighted to execute his commands and he was clothed with wisdom and glory above them all. Yet the Son of God was exalted above him as one in power and authority with, the, with God. He shared God's counsel, while Lucifer did not thus enter into the purposes of God. Why, questioned this mighty angel, should Christ have the supremacy? Why is he honoured above Lucifer? Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, yes, yeah, so we see here, um, again, that Christ was introduced as an equal with God. And uh, we see here the effect of Lucifer, um, what was in his heart. Um, so, like, one of the things, like, he, we see here that he has bowed with them. But in his heart, there was a struggle. So, at this point, there wasn't seen that he does has a problem. He was bowing with the others. But in his heart, there was a struggle, um, fierce conflict. Um, um, and yeah, so it was envy and jealousy. So I think I want to write this point. So we see his bound about and um but we see here that the influence of the holy angel seems seemed for a time to carry him with them. So um, um Um, uh, and then it says but again he was filled with pride so kind of like there is again so that's mean it was there it's gone and now it's there again so we see here again the pride coming a jealousy um His desire for supermassy returned. And envy of Christ was once more indulged. Um, and then we see that he was um, Um, clothed with wisdom and glory about them all. Uh, okay. Um, so, yeah, so basically Lucifer didn't kind of like was asking why and wanted the supermassy. Um, and then there will be another quote. Unless someone wants to say something, please, if you want to jump in, feel free. Um, Like to just quickly say something. Um, we know that when there's issues in our um, individual lives, there's our mind, there's a battle with holy angels and evil angels. But as Lucifer was a, a covering cherub, 
the battles in his mind was just emotions, wasn't it? I'm not sure what you mean. I'm sorry. So, so for for humanity's minds, our minds, uh -huh. there's back that like, there's holy angels and evil angels because of the transgression. Evil angels can in influence our minds. Though at the beginning, Lucifer was the covering cherub, and his battle in his mind was just emotions and feelings. Yeah, and um, kind of like, he, like with him it was different, and at the mo like with Adam and Eve it was different as well, because after basically um after the sin, so they had a like um wisdom and about adam and eve you have heard that they had a, like this noble powers and well-balanced mind but um because they were in harmony with god um and pure thoughts and that stuff but this all has through disobedience changed um and perverted um the powers um and selfishness instead of love so the nature has a bit changed since like when we look at Lucifer or um when we look at Lucifer or Adam and Eve there has been change since then um could not at all uh, Natalie she is writing hence why God Christ could not allow Lucifer fake repentance Joe Price heaven I'm sorry, I don't know if I understand what you mean. You wanna... huh? When you when you mentioned the quote earlier and God Christ could not allow Satan and the angels back in because it was a fake repentance, so God Christ could not jeopardize Lucifer's fake repentance. Wasn't yeah, right. It's already too late. I don't know if it's because they're they're I think we probably maybe have it in these quotes, uh, if I put it in there. But um, for sure, it's in Bachelor and Prophets in the first chapter. Um, that there was time when he did repent, when if he would repent it, I think I put it there. So I think we will get to it. He still had a chance to make things okay. Where here, it was already too late. It was already after his course of probation. It was already, yeah. But I think we we will get to that point. But yeah, thank you, Natalie. Um, okay, could someone else read the next quote? Leaving his place. Okay, I'll read. Mm -hmm. Leaving. Mm -hmm leaving his place in the immediate presence of the Father, Lucifer went forth to diffuse the spirit of discontent among the angels. He worked with mysterious secrecy and for a time concealed his real purpose under the appearance of reverence for God. He began to insinuate doubts concerning the laws that governed heavenly beings, intimating that though laws might be necessary for the inhabitants of the worlds. Angels, being more exalted, needed no such restraint for their own wisdom was a sufficient guide. Thank you. Um, okay, so here we see um, that he went and secretly started working to cause doubts in other angels. Um, I'm going to write it here. Um. Okay, and also, um, it is regarding to the government and law saying that they don't need such restraint and guide and pointing to their wisdom. Um, so, so yeah, so, um, I don't know, it just reminds me a bit like the heaven were built on freedom, 
we do like freedom, but when it comes across with equality, um, there are some restraints. Yes, charity or blessing? Hi, Magda. Hello. <laughs> Hello. Um, I don't know if we read um, one of the quotes that seems to suggest that Lucifer was actually lying when he, well, say he, but when, when they, when Lucifer um, brought up all the issues that they had with the God. Um, it, it's not as straightforward, it seems, as I'm not happy with how the God is handling things, they're not handling things properly. I don't know, it seems to suggest that when Lucifer started going out to disseminate his thoughts and feelings, he, <sighs> Lucifer was lying. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. And what that suggests to me is Lucifer actually, because when you lie, you know the truth, but then you twist it, you falsify it, you turn it around into something that is not, you do it intentionally. Mm -hmm. And <clears throat> I guess when you do something like that, it's it's difficult. It, it, I'll say it's impossible unless you really come to a point where you personally admit and say, I was lying all this time. I did not have a good motive. And Lucifer didn't do that. You see, Lucifer said what they said and stuck with it. So there was a lot of intent, I guess, is what I'm saying in terms of what mm -hmm. it wasn't as simple as, oh, I, 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 I didn't know actually this information, or I thought Christ and I were equal, and okay, now you've clarified everything and it's, it's all fine. No, no, it is it is good point. I've mentioned that before at the very beginning before we started reading the points, but I put it there because. That's what he was doing. So thank you for your point. No, that's 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 good point. That he was going and deceiving people by um conspiracy theories, by lies. Um yeah, about that, the that, government. Yeah, that's uh -huh. what I just wanted to contribute. That when Lucifer was doing the work that Lucifer was doing, there was intent to that because they were actually lying. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, blessing. Um yeah, so so he was causing doubts by lying by conspiracy theories about God's government and law, mm. and saying oh. them that they don't they don't need to be need such a restraint and guide. Um, okay, Hello, so, no, this is Charity. Hello, Charity. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, I just wanted to also go back to the quotation that we read about. I think it was we were talking about fake repentance i think we did speak about that when uh -huh. when lucifer um, bowed with the rest of the the angels i think it's the the good angel and how he was having that struggle where mm -hmm. um you have the influence of the good angels right and he is bowing together with the other angels but he's having this struggle in his mind between truth, justice, and there's a third one that was mentioned, and then there's the issue of jealousy and pride, right? And you have these two warring um, thoughts and feelings, if I can say, mm -hmm. that that he's having in his mind. And <clears throat> um, also, like, connecting it with what Blessing was saying, that he knew what he was doing. Like, he knew that he was lying. He probably might have not properly understood uh, the extent of what he was doing and didn't really understand some of the feelings that he was having. And But he still went on to do it. He made the, the, the decision to still continue in that path, right? And as he continued in that path, when he now comes back and he says, okay, I want to be a part of the, the, the flock. Please take me in. Um, he hasn't dealt with that problem that got him to that place in the first place. Mm -hmm. And he hasn't admitted the fact that what he did was wrong, right? Because he intentionally 
uh, took um, the information that he had, the feelings that he had, he twisted it, and then he 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 went to the other angels and brought them to his side and basically got himself and the other angels expe expelled together. So it's not as easy as you just come back and say, yeah, 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 yeah. I realized my problem. I want to now be a part of the what? Uh, heaven. And the reason why, anyway, he's saying that is because he's seeing how painful it is to not be in heaven. And he's realizing that, okay, I'm missing out on a lot of things and there's there's no joy in 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 the direction that I've taken. So I'm missing that joy and happiness that I used to have when I was in this place. So he then goes back with that mind, but really with no true repentance, like was mentioned. So it, it then goes back to that issue of digging deep into your heart and trying to deal with those problems that got you to that place in the first place. And he didn't do that. Thank you, Charity. Yeah, but there will be quote. Um um if i would find it <laughs> there will be quote i'm pretty sure i did put it in there um where he was aware and understood what he has done wrong but because of pride he decided to um uh, to kind of like go forward in the way he started so he did have a chance really and got explained to him and he did um understood but because of his position and that stuff he just um i'm just in this kind of uh, i'm going to come to this quote sorry sorry debbie andres andres has got his hand up yes thank you thank you okay andres yeah so i have um these two conflicting thoughts or ideas that i'm i'm hearing what one one is that it was too late for Lucifer um, to repent, to have repented and go back to heaven. And the other one is that it was a, f a fake repentance. Um, so, um, but I would I would say he was too late. But before he had a chance to repent. But we will get to this quote. But that I want to just tell you this before you carry on. But now we can carry on. Uh, she, me carry on <clears throat> um, okay yeah so <clears throat> so i see them as two different answers and kind of incompatible in a way because like so if it was too late it means that it was true repentance but it was too late to repent now because of i don't know some other reason um and if it was fake repentance what would have happened if it was true repentance? Would would, would Lucifer have been allowed in heaven? I, I'm not sure if, if that makes sense. Yeah, can I hold your question? It does. Um, just because there will be quotes which we will come still to, and sure. will be. Yeah. So if you, if you can hold and your thought, and then you can, um, come back to me after we read the, the quotes, if that's okay. Yeah. Please. Absolutely. Yep. Thank you, Andreas. Thank you. Hello, my brother. Um, hello? Uh, this is Simba. <clears throat> hello, Simba. Hi. Uh, can I ask you a question? Uh-huh. All right. Is, is it possible to say this is what happened to Lucifer? Now, is it possible to check that concept of what happened to Lucifer to to see that Lucifer maybe was, was doing a fake independence, like what you are saying, is it possible to do the same thing even to a fellow human being just like you, to say, you are not repenting, truly this is a fake repentance. Is it possible sorry, for I'm, someone... I'm, it's a bit cutting out for me. I hear a bit muffled. Uh, can you can you try again? Sorry, Simba. Oh, it's fine. Oh, I'm saying we are seeing this is what happened in heaven, right? Hello. If what? Can you can you hear me? Can you hear me, Madam? Yes, I can hear you. All right, let me put it in your chat. I'm sorry. Thank you.
So while you're writing it, I will just say, so at this point, that was that seemed to Lucifer as injustice, that um, um, Jesus is equal with God. And, you know, we like, for example, in our time, I think we could kind of like see it, um, um, if I'm not wrong, um, um, when, uh, you know, when there was this presentation and about on what basis people are kind of like voted in uh, into leadership position and there was uh, men and women and the woman maybe didn't have that many opportunities because of the sexism. Um, uh, so men would seem to be more qualified. Um, so about this movement, basically, it does basically give the opportunity to the woman, which she didn't have before, where the men would feel more qualified because the system was kind of like on his side all the time. Um so um i guess we could maybe parallel it with that um so lucifer felt like injustice that um jesus uh, was placed in the position of equality with god um i i don't know maybe th that that was that were my thoughts regarding to this um simba are you writing Um, or do you want to try say it again? Sorry, I thought you said you will put uh, it in the. Uh, no worries, yeah. no worries. I can just comment. No, oh no! If you want to ask, please, or add some contribute. Try, try say it now, please. Uh, I will put it in the chat. Don't worry. I'll write it in the chat, man. You said it is in the chat. I'm going to put it in the chat. Okay. Okay. Um, Magda? Yes? Are you staying with what you've just said, that Jesus, uh, Lucifer didn't realise Jesus had... Oh, uh, Jesus, not Jesus, Christ didn't have the opportunity to show his hierarchy. No, 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 no. it's not about show opportunity, but it's more about, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, it, so Lucifer thought, were you saying that Lucifer thought that he didn't have the opportunity, so he was jealous of... No or Christ didn't show his um didn't have his opportunity which way around are you saying it no 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 um it was more parallel to how Lucifer has felt and how probable males feeling here when women are put into the uh, position of leadership where it can seems for men um that they are more qualified where the woman is as well but basically on the um men's side the system was with them where women didn't have the opportunity so it was more just kind of like parallel to how lucifer probably felt um it felt as just injustice but maybe it's wrong thought maybe it's not really um, right thought. i get what you're saying i was just i thought you were look, you were looking at the the male because they're both male and i know you're comparing that women didn't have the right education and chance to rise up and but I was just thinking, but Lucifer did, he was the most qualified. So I was wondering how you compare in the first half. But yeah, I get what you're saying. But that would be the same with men. And Lucifer was like, for example, there was written about his beauty and wisdom, where about Jesus, there wasn't anything like this. Yeah, that's so why I was like, yeah. Hidden. It was hidden with Christ. Yeah, they didn't kind of see it. So there yeah, is, so there is beauty and like... wisdom in Christ, but it's just not outward. It's inward, but, but it is manifested outward. And with humans and angels, we know we was created. Um, but they always existed, the heavenly trio. So you, um, there may be similarities in your comparison, 
but I'm not sure that's um hundred percent correct. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Richard. Um and there's in chat um Simba. As humans, are we able to discern that this is a fake repentance or not? As God did. That's Simba's question. Um, if someone wants to answer that. Um, I think we can go just from the quotes. Um, at this case. Or if, if you mean like. In between us. I mm. put a on the chat, Magda. Natale, by their fruit. You shall know them. Yeah, thank you. Um, we will carry on. Maybe we come a little bit to this as well, actually, Simba. Um, maybe from a little bit different point, but maybe we come to this. Um, okay. Okay, uh, mm -hmm. madam. I just mm -hmm. have a call. Um, I don't know how we arrived to the term fake repentance. Um, because the quotations, the quotations that we have read did not say anything about Lucifer's repentance being fake. Yeah, that, I agree with that. I, I think we are reading into the into the text here because we know the whole story. So we are going to the text and say um, this repentance was fake. But the writer of the text does not tell us that Lucifer's repentance was actually fake. Yeah. So my, my question is, um, how, how are we doing that? How Because we'll find ourselves in trouble now if we're going to make conclusions um, against what the writer is said. We we need to have proper justification for us to say, you know, the writer is said repentance, uh, but the writer is actually inferring that this repentance is fake. Yeah, no, I, I agree with that. Thank you, Blessing, because um, it doesn't say anything like this. And only what we have said here, it was too late. It was his close of probation and it was too far already. Um, which we know that for us, there is close of probation at some point as well. Um, and I'm saying we will come to the quote where we will see he did have a chance to repent. Uh, we will come to the quote where um, it will be told that he did understood what he has done wrong, but he didn't kind of like at that point Mm, he carry on with his behavior because um his pride um so so uh, so i agree with that thank you for that because uh yeah i think um lots of people has caught with the fake repentance um uh, but we should so, stay with the quotes um, Magda. yeah yes so the pride was a fruit of the position that he fell that Lucifer fell from that that's how that manifested because he was in state he didn't really fully comprehend the responsibility of being in that position yeah um yeah and it's connected to the position yeah um because he was highly exalted so for him to admit that he was in error um Curtis, would you like to summarize for us what you have shared in the in the um, chat, please? Sure. It's just an extension of the quote that you had shared earlier in pointing out that when Lucifer um, went to Jesus and repented in inverted commas, um, Jesus pointed out, God pointed out, um, that the seeds of rebellion were still in satan's heart and so when satan repented he wasn't repenting for what he had done he wasn't repenting because he saw 
that the law and the government of God were just and that he had taken advantage of the favor that God had shown him or had shown uh, their creation. And so Ellen White is just pointing out that the repentance that Lucifer gave didn't come from the place that true repentance comes from. Um, it was, and so I think that's where people are extrapolating this term of fake repentance um, from these words, that it wasn't the type of repentance that God receives. Um, yeah. So in okay. Lucifer's mind, uh, they may have felt that I'm repenting, but Jesus knew that what was at the core of Satan's rebellion hadn't been dealt with by Satan, by Lucifer, and that if that was to be allowed into heaven, it would have just perpetuated the problem even more. Thank so you, Kurti. that's where I see people are getting this, the okay. term fake repentance. Thank you so much for this addition. Hi, um, Hello, Charete. Sorry, I had my hand up for the first time. I was something else, and then now I have something else. <laughs> okay. But, uh, I'm not sure which one to say first. But anyway, um, <laughs> in terms of the issue of repentance, uh, one of the reasons why I use the word fake is because uh, of... You know, when you look at the steps of salvation and <clears throat> as we have understood how uh, conversion, the conversion experience goes and what repentance means. And when we look at the experience that Lucifer had, we like we spoke about, we mentioned how he had realized what he had lost by not being in heaven. Right, and he felt the pain of being separated from the heavenly beings and everyone. And even when you when you read Ellen White, she she speaks about how he also looked at the other angels that he had been expelled from heaven with, right? And he saw just how miserable they were, and they yearned or longed for what they used to have before because the place that they were was a miserable place, really, right? So um, he then desired to go back. And that's why he even says, okay, even if you take me and reinstate me in the same position that I was in, or even any other position, I'll accept whatever you give me. Just take me back into heaven. So when he's going back and he wants to be taken back to heaven, it's not because, like Curtis said, he has understood what he has done and how bad it was and is actually turning away from that sin because that's what repentance is turning away from all that he had done and realizing uh the problem that he had and because like the code says he wasn't going to be obedient to the law of god and also accept the law of god because he hadn't turned away from that sin so that repentance in quote that we are calling repentance that he did when he comes to god and says i want to be admitted into heaven is fake so mm -hmm. that's where i i i used the word fake okay thank you charity um you know i since we are talking about this point i did find the quotes and i was talking about as well so it's two quotes if someone would like to read it please uh -huh. Too long. No, you just you know you've had over an hour. Okay, thank you very much. Debbie. Uh okay, this is first one. And uh okay, and this oh no, one second. <laughs> and this is the second one, which we could read now. Um so, can I have a reader, please? I'll read it. Is it the uh, Lucifer himself, that one? Mm -hmm. Yes, please, Debbie. Lucifer himself had not at first been acquainted with the real nature of his feelings. For a time he had feared to express the workings and imaginings of his mind, yet he did not dismiss them. His disaff disaffection was proved to be without cause. And he was made to see what uh, would be the result of persisting in revolt. 
Lucifer was convinced that he was in the wrong. He saw that the Lord is, a, is righteous in all his ways and holy in all his works. Though he had left his position as covering cherub, yet if he had been willing to return to God, acknowledging the Creator's wisdom and satisfied to fill the place appointed him in God's great plan, he would have been reinstated in his office. The time had come for a final decision. He must fully yield to the divine sovereignty or place himself in open rebellion. He nearly reached the decision to return, but pride forbade him. It was too great a sacrifice for one who had been so wholly, highly honoured to confess that he had been in error, that his imaginings were false, and to yield to the authority which he had been working to prove unjust. Thank you, Debbie. So, I don't know. So, this quote's kind of like, that's talking about that he had this imagination and feelings, um, but he did dismiss them. Um, he did not dismiss them, sorry. <laughs> and his dissatisfaction was proven to be with cause. Um, so, um, so he saw what would happen if he will carry on. Um, and he was convinced that he did do wrong. Um, and so God as the righteous. Um, but there was time, so he was kind of like, um, had left his position and um, there was time of decision where he meant to decide. Um, um, so whether fully yield or to go into the open rebellion. Um, okay, would someone like to add something to this? Yes, yeah, I, uh, <laughs> I was just thinking, could we say that um, uh, Lucifer didn't go through all the steps of salvation, right? Like you have those, uh, we, it is, is it seven? No, the, the steps like of the conversion experience, right? We have those different steps before someone gets to a point where they, uh, what's the other one? The one that one, the one that we placed in two thousand and one. What's that one? <laughs> Sorry, I'm forgetting. But but yeah. basically, could we say that he didn't go through all all the steps? He went up to a certain point and didn't finish that whole conv conversion experience. Is that it? Could be. I will ask I other people. Someone what gets what I'm saying. I, I understand what you're saying. Um, what uh, what thoughts of other people? Uh, if you want to. Okay, so, yeah, someone wanted to say something? Considering the fact that Lucifer rebelled, it means he didn't go through those phases that the charity is talking about. I think the only challenge that we can face is a situation whereby a fellow human being will be in a now position to say someone, you have not yet gone through those things of uh, salvation, therefore you are not fit for your, your repentance, I can see you are, you, are, you, are, you are faking, that is not true. That is where we have mm -hmm. been now. When someone is saying, you, the experience of conversion, I, I, from what I'm observing, you do not go pass through those uh, stages. It becomes a challenge when a human being is doing that. Yes, fellow human being, that is what I think. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, okay, Magda, I, I also want to, to comment. Uh -huh. Uh, the last okay. quotation, the quotation we have gone through, uh, the this one, the one that Debbie has just read, um, the one that begins with though he had left his position as covering cherub, yet he, yet if he had been willing to return uh, to God, acknowledging the Creator's wisdom, it is it is. My first question is: Where do we mark this quotation? Where do we mark it? Do we mark it 
before the close of probation or after the close of probation? Then if, if we identify where we mark the quotation, then I can then ask my other question. So this one, where, which we have read. Yes, the last one. Where, where exactly but, do we mark it? I guess if it's coming to last decision, final decision, um, so I think it would be probably, where do you think it would be? I'm confused because it, it is saying that uh, though he had left his position as covering cherub, yet if he had been willing to return to God, acknowledging the creator's wisdom and satisfied to fill the place appointed him in God's great plan, he would have been reinstated in his office. So th this quotation to me looks like um, it is after Lucifer had actually lost his position as covering cherub. So it is, it is after he had been chased out of heaven. Mm -hmm. but I don't know if I'm lost, but it looks like it. Because as God would, uh, if he had been willing to return to God, he would have been appointed the position that he had lost before. You see? I don't mm -hmm. know. Then it I said that to... for final decision, he must fully yield to the divine sovereignty or place himself in open rebellion. I don't know now how how we we are able to place because if you are going to place it after the 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 point that we have marked to be the clause of probation, it then becomes a little messy here. Because we say that after the close of probation, there is no chance for a person to be reconciled uh, back to God. At least it, yeah. it, it my understanding of the close of probation. But it looks like here, the writer, uh, Ellen White, is, is saying that um, there could have been possibility if for Lucifer, to be placed in his position as covering cherub and be reinstated, reinstated back to his office. You see? Uh, and he actually nearly reached that decision, but pride forbade him. It was too great a sacrifice for one who had been sorely, highly honored to confess that he had been in error, that his imaginings were false and to yield to the authority which had been uh, uh, working to prove unjust. So, well, why would think about that? My second question or observation would be, the quotation we read before we read this one, I think is the quotation that Ketus uh, posted, the one that Lucifer approaches Christ and Lucifer says to, to, to God, if I'm going to be reinstated to the position that I was holding prior to my dismissal, I would be happy to occupy that position or even a position below that position. It echoes to me the story of the prodigal son. The prodigal son realized what he had lost in his father's home, right? And the feeling of loss is that which made this prodigal son to repent. And scripture said, he said to himself, in my father's house, there are many, I, I wouldn't be eating with the swine if I were back at my father's uh, house. And that was his motivation for going back. And the prodigal son went back and uttered the same words that Lucifer utters here. Because the son says, if I'm going to be placed at the position that I was, or even below the position that I was, I would be willing to, you know, be reinstated. But these two stories, we see that Lucifer is not allowed in 
uh, but the prodigal son is allowed back in. You see now. Mm -hmm. Okay. I'll 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 give my uh thinking about these two stories and how messy it becomes in um in my mind particularly when we put up a a way mark and say this is a close of probation there is no hope etc etc um and when we seem to be able or uh, to say this repentance is fake etc etc i i see that there is a limitation to to humanity in terms of being 100% sure that somebody's uh, repentance is actually uh, fake. I think there's that limitation. I see, I see divinity in all this, how Christ makes the judgment that Lucifer's repentance, yes, Lucifer is repented, but they cannot be allowed in. I see some 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 form of divinity coming to play here, which as human beings we do not have. That's my personal observation. I I don't know. Mm -hmm. According to me, I could be wrong. According to me, even if we are to put a way mark to say this is the COP, the clause of human proportion, it's done and dusted. A X as is not going to be saved. I think we, in as much as we do that, it is ultimately up to God to be able to discern, decipher, and make a discreet decision about that kind of possibility with a hundred percent accuracy. Um, you know, uh, I think this was from different quotes from that was from Spirit of um, Spiritual Gifts. And there was said that that was already too late. He could not come back. That's why I have put there close of probation. So from that quote, at that certain time, I have put there close of probation because he could not have come back at that point. So I believe these quotes will be something earlier where he could even decide at that point. It must have been before close of probation. Um, we don't know when we like for us as individuals when exactly for us will come close of probation, but at some point it will come back come, and there will be too late to probably come back. Um, so this was from different quote, and I believe this must have been before the close of probation. Um, but I can be wrong as well. Uh, but because the time is quite tight now, I'm sorry, but we will have to kind of like coming to an end. And I didn't get to the point which I was coming to. So um, you'll have to do a part two, Magda. <laughs> uh, I think it's not that long for part two. So I maybe will just um, kind of like um, go to the point which I wanted to go to. Um, but yeah, thank you. I think it was, was it Ignatius who, who was just speaking? Was it you? Isn't it? Um, so yeah. Um, yeah, so so I'm not sure as well, but um, I did put that this from the different quote where it was too late to come back. So that's why I have put that close of probation. And it is possible that this is, and I believe that these quotes are before close of probation, when he could still decide and return, because that's what the Woods does say. Um, but yeah. Um, so I'm thinking where to start now. Okay. <laughs> um, Okay, so we did basically went through how it seemed like an injustice to Lucifer, that Jesus was equal with God. Then he did go and mysteriously, secretly um, try to put doubts in 
um, another angel's mind and um, um, kind of like was talking against God's government. Um, Mm. he does speaks about how he was trying to um secure freedom mm. let me leave that out um Uh, Ignatius say after Daniel 12 man if God could salvage one more sinner why not I do not say this is to destroy our structure I agree and the structure is usually um, institutional so it's a cooperative and individual is something different so I do agree with this um mm. But I, yeah, yeah. Um, sorry, I, I'm just a bit lost now <laughs> where, where I've um, been. But yeah, yeah, um, with this point, what you were saying, like even like after Sunday law, it doesn't mean we, we are going to stop reaching out our friends who are Adventists because, um, yeah, it is, with individuals it can be different so yeah um i've lost a little bit um myself in the notes so i'm going to go to so yeah so lucifer was basically going and giving another conspiracies and lies to other people and um There was another quote so far as Satan himself was concerned, it was true that he had now gone too far to return, but not so with those who had been blinded by his deceptions. Um, but pride, love for their, for their leader and the desire for unrestric unrestricted freedom were permitted to bear sway. And the pleadings of divine love and mercy were finally rejected. So we see that um, one thing is the pride um, and the desire for unrestricted freedom. So we do see in the two streams of information, the unrestricted freedom. So it is kind of like the test we do have now. It's back there as well. Um, and then another quote. I'm going to post another two quotes if someone could no before we carry on um i would like to ask someone if someone would be able to give me way marks for matthew 13 So, um, so here was sowing of the seed, here was plowing, um, what, what was this, another dispensations, please? There's the, is it the budding or, I don't know if they use the word budding, but like, there's the. Okay, there's the part where there's a full corn in the ear. And I think it's okay. the fourth one, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, so we have a three stages of the seed. So here will be the blade. Then there will be the four corn. Mm -hmm. We will say immature fruit, okay? Mm -hmm. And then the mature fruit, we will say here. Um... So no, we no. have a uh, early rain and latter rain, and you were saying binding off. Was it the last dispensation? Is that what you meant? I said harvest, like the cutting of the harvest. The mm -hmm. green. 
Um, so, at this point, we do see two different fruits, right? Uh, so one will be tares and one will be wheat. Uh, wheat. So the black one, that's tares, fruit of tares, and this one, that will be wheat. Um, so until this moment, we, we can't distinguish them. We don't see who is who. We don't see what plant is what plant, I mean. Uh, but it's at this point when the fruit comes forth, when we can see. And then the, it just keeps maturing. Yeah. And I want just to connect to this, um, this last few points. Um, so if someone could read these two paragraphs, please. If could I have asked someone? Um, Crispin, would you be able to read, please? And if not, then can I ask Sidri? I can read much. Okay, if okay, um. Charity, oh, that's please. fine. Sidri can read. It's okay. Um, not sure if she's available. Yeah, so Charity, if you can read it, please. Thank you. <clears throat> okay. God permitted... Oh, sorry. God permitted Satan to carry forward uh, his work until the spirit of disaffection ripened into active revolt. It was necessary for his plans to be fully developed that their true nature and tendency might be seen by all. Lucifer, as the anointed cherub, had been highly exalted. He was greatly loved by the heavenly beings, when his influence over them was strong. All his acts were so clothed with mystery that it was difficult to disclose to the angels the true nature of his work. Until fully developed, it could not be made to appear the evil thing it was his disaffection would not be seen to be rebellion even the loyal angels could not fully discern his character or see what his work was leading thank you charity so from this verses uh, we see basically that um god did let satan carry on the work um until his character, his plans were developed and revealed um, so fully by everyone, so everyone could see it. Um, because he was highly exalted, um, so and had a strong influence over the, over the other angels. And so the other quotes does say similar things that... Um, um because he was working in secretly like in mystery so his character his nature of his work needed to be truly so seen by everyone and fully developed um um so um uh, uh, uh. Yeah, so 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 basically, so it it could be so we see even here. So that's why I wanted to do this um, Matthew thirteen because of the ripening of the fruit, and in this period we see already the fruit, but the character still ripening. So um, God had to wait, kind of like um, for longer time, and let Satan do um and develop his character and do the work so everyone could see it and his character was fully developed um and there will be another two paragraphs and then then after charity if if, if these two paragraphs we can read as well and then um then you can say your point please um it's actually not me who wanted to speak, but I'll read it and then you'll speak. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> no, so, okay. so after these two quotes, please. So can I ask Emma if she could read these two quotes, please? Okay. Yeah. 
God's government included not only the inhabitants of heaven, but of all the worlds that God had created. And Lucifer had concluded that if it could carry the angels of heaven with Lucifer in rebellion, Lucifer could carry also all the worlds. It was therefore necessary to demonstrate before the inhabitants of heaven and of all the worlds that God's government is just, God's law perfect. Satan had made it appear that Satan himself was seeking to promote the good of the universe, the true character of the usurper and their real object must be understood by all. Lucifer must have time to manifest himself, manifest <laughs> themselves by their wicked works. Mm -hmm. Thank you. So, so it's it's basically showing again that the true character had to be shown and understood by all, um, and it has must develop and manifest. Um, in the wicked world. So we see that here righteous will be more righteous and wicked will be more wicked. So the character is still developing in this time. Um, so <laughs> anyway, so my thoughts were that um, there are probably even issues now regarding to organization, leaderships and that stuff. Um, and um, what did I wanted to say? And yeah, basically that the shaking may be not going to look as other shakings because through the Sunday law, we probably most of us will carry on um, together the close of probation and then there will be the binding off. Yes, um, charity or blessing. It's blessing this time. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> yes, um, I wanted to comment on Matthew 13 and... Mm -hmm. I want to do so by going back to a study done by Elder Paminda in 2019, if I'm not mistaken. And this was in Brazil, I think. Um, it was the school in Brazil, early 2019. And the point that he made was a methodological one, which is every parable has a theme. And if we're going to get the most out of a parable, we need to be able to identify the theme of the parable. And coming to the theme of a parable is not as easy as it sounds. Um, he didn't say it in these exact words, but I think that was the idea, that parables don't give out the information very easily. So it takes mm -hmm. a lot of work, a lot of time. Um, you need to get into context. So you need to use the rules. Sometimes there's history associated with it. So there's a lot of work. Mm -hmm. But in summary, Elder Paminda identified that the theme of the parable of Matthew 13 is the harvest. And also every parable that I'll say Christ gave, every parable that we are given as God's people is supposed to teach us something about the kingdom of God and the kingdom of heaven. Because at the end of the day, the controversy is not about individuals. It's not about individual angels. It's not about individual human mm -hmm. beings. It's about the Godhead and how the Godhead handles government. That's the controversy. We can say God's law, we can say God's throne, but at the end of the day, it's about whether God's way of doing things, of running the universe is the right way to do it. And even though it impacts us as individuals, the controversy is not about us as individuals. We participate in the controversy by deciding to uh, take one way of uh, running a government versus the other way of running the government. So the reason why I say that is when you come to Matthew 13, it's the same thing. It's talking about how God's government deals with something. And in this case, it's how God's government deals with harvest or separation, how separation happens in the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. Because there's a common question that, you know, if God knew that Lucifer was going to cause so much damage to the universe, why didn't God either not create Lucifer or destroy Lucifer immediately after, you know, it started doing what it started doing, you know, the rebellion. And I think this parable is a, is a, is a good way to illustrate how the kingdom of heaven works when it comes to things like that, which is you have to allow that work to mature. Mm -hmm. So that when it's dealt with, it's clear to everyone why it has to be dealt with. 
So Ellen White explains that Lucifer worked with so much secrecy and Lucifer's work was so mysterious that it was quite difficult to pinpoint that the points that Lucifer was making were not only bad, they were in total opposition <laughs> to, 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 to the Godhead and to the happiness of the universe. Because Lucifer presented it in such a way that, no, I'm looking out for the good of all created beings. And um, this is an adjustment or a reform to the government of God. There's some defects that need to be filled up. And I can see them and point them out. And if I'm given my right position, I can fix the problem. So Lucifer made it sound all nice and, and benevolent. But it's only time that would show that that way of doing things is not sustainable and is actually a threat to the stability of the universe. It would result in death. And thus, in order for everyone to be able to see it clearly, it had to mature, which is where the agricultural model becomes a powerful illustration that when two types of plants are growing in the field, particularly wheat and tares, it's not easy to distinguish between them early on because early on, mm -hmm. they're all green blades. They look the same. But it's only when the fruit starts appearing that you begin to see uh, the difference. And when the plants have matured, then that work of destroying and separation can happen. And I think, um, again, when you come back to what we are trying to learn here, I think it has more to do with um, forms of government or the way of running a government more than it has to do with an individual person. Because I think when you try and apply it to an individual person, you know, all sorts of arguments arise. And it. I think we then lose the point of the parable. It doesn't become helpful in the end. So that's why I took us back to 2019 and Rodolfo Mendes, that, you know, Methodology is very important when we approach every parable. We need to identify the theme. And the theme is about how the kingdom of God handles separation. How separation happens in the kingdom of heaven. And the way God dealt with and is dealing with Lucifer is a good illustration of how this issue of rebellion and an opposite government to God's government is dealt with. You know, it's given time. It's shown to be unjust. It's shown to be dangerous. Then it's dealt with. So yeah, that's the point I just wanted to make. Yeah, thank you so much. Yeah, so I think you summarized it nicely. So yeah, so so basically, yeah, we have started started about the discussion which were, which are in the movement and the presentation which has been done, and um, that there is a struggle with the way, um probably in the movement, the way the movement works, operates, um, et cetera. Um, so I wanted us to take us back to the heaven um, where there is this issue and it started there. And then I wanted to also through that quote show us and through Matthew 13 that um, this shaking probably not going to look as other shakings um, at the Sunday law because our character will be more developing. And based on this um, parable, we know that at that point, at this point, because the character is not manifested as much, it would hurt um, the weeds um, if, um, so yeah, so so the character's developing and ripening in the works. So righteous getting more righteous, doing righteously and, um, um, and wicked, wickedly. So yeah, this is closing and we will close with word of prayer. Thank you, everyone, for participation. Our loving God, I want to thank you for your love and mercy for us. And I want to thank you for your Sabbath day and we can study and discuss together um, these things about the way of, the, of your government um, and the test which are in front of us and what's going on in the movement. I, I just want to pray for everyone in for everyone of us in the movement. Um, lead us with your Holy Spirit. Um, I pray for the leadership and for your wisdom and 
yeah, be with everyone. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone. Thank you so well, much, Mark.